I definitely wanted to start out by just talking about a little background, um, like some of your musical influences growing up and how you think that kind of plays into your music today. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of my influences happen to be really strong female voices like Linda Ronstadt and Mary Chapin Carpenter and Tracy Chapman and Shania Twain and Bonnie Raitt. So a little uh, thing that was deep rooted in me because my mom played these all growing up. So. Awesome, and um, you grew up in Maryland, right? So I kind of read a little bit on your bio. You kind of had a little connection in a way to Tommy Mottola, right? And that kind of helped get you to Nashville. Yeah. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, we had a very brief uh, involvement. He had a brief involvement in my career, but a really huge uh, contribution was him making uh, the introduction to James Stroud for me. So James was one of my three producers on my debut album, Cut to Impress. And, you know, had I not met Tommy and had my music not caught his ear, then I probably wouldn't have had that foundation. I would have moved to Nashville regardless, but okay. it was nice to know James Stroud coming here. Definitely. And did you always know, like, country music was what you wanted to do? Or were you kind of open? Like, did it find you or did you find it? I think a little bit of both. I grew up in the Mid-Atlantic area, so... You know, we didn't have any genre that we were really partial to in that region, but, you know, I listened to rock and pop and blues and country music. But it really came down to when I started writing my own original material. The only thing that felt truly authentic to me was country music. And, um, you know, authenticity, I think, is something that is a priority for any artist. And I love country. I love the storytelling, and I always grew up listening to it. And speaking of the storytelling, your album, Cut to Impress, it's an awesome album, and you have a magnificent voice. And I love the, the variation of the album. I think there's something for everyone. And tell me a little bit about putting that album together, choosing the songs. Thank you. Um, it was my debut album, so like everything really leading up to that point in my life uh, was in that album. And it really became the process of elimination for me because I had what I thought was a really great song, and it is, but I just kept having to be ruthless with myself and be like, well, I've found a new song that uh, achieves what this song tried to, but better. Right. Or I wrote a new song that you know, speaks to me more at this stage in my life. So you know, it was kind of two, three years in the making of just me trying to find the best songs that best represented where I was at that point. So songs that were resonating with me three years ago when I started didn't necessarily represent where I was now. So I just had to be really honest with myself, and it was a good process of self-discovery. Yeah, definitely. And the, um, the new single I know is already getting some radio play, doing really well. And have you gotten a really big fan reaction for that one? It seems to be a fan favorite. It is a fan favorite, and you know the story kind of pushes the envelope a little bit, and there's murder and whiskey and smoking and guns and all, you know, this dinner table topics but uh, it is a fan favorite and I think it's because the character in the song is so complex she's not a good person she's vindictive and she you know commits these crimes of passion but by the end of the song you relate to her there's something so sympathetic about her and vulnerable that people can kind of uh, put themselves in her shoes I can see that. I know I've heard a lot of buzz about that song, so I think it's going to keep moving up the charts for sure. And um, you recently did a cover of the Great Big Worlds and Christina Aguilera song, uh, Say Something, and that has been just all over the Internet. Is there another song that you think that you would ever want to cover, and would you ever put a cover on, on one of your albums? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, Bobby Bones was pretty creative in hearing that song and I called him because I had, looking back now, my new single that I wanted him to hear. He loves music, and he's like, yeah, I'd love to hear that, but I also want you to do me a favor and work up my favorite pop song right now because I think you'd kill it, and um, that's where the idea came from. And, you know, the simplicity of that song and the lyrics and just the honesty of it make it sort of transcend genres. doesn't really matter what uh, genre you prefer. And I think that's why it caught fire, because we just did a really laid-back arrangement, just my guitar player, fiddle player, and I. And uh, it's in our set list now, because 
I think we're just getting a really great response, and it's consistent with the rest of my material. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's I, I didn't know how that came about. That's yeah. really cool. And uh, speaking of your set list, I know that you, I've never had the privilege of seeing you perform live, but I know you are known for your live shows. And what is your favorite thing about performing live and what brings that out in you that you're just known to be like this awesome performer? I think what I love about performing the most, and I don't know if this sounds cliche, but I get to be an entirely different person. It's like, it's like bipolar disorder being celebrated on stage <laughs> because you can kind of just uh, lay it all out there, and when the show's over, you go back to being like that happy person yeah. or whatever. But I can, there's like this masculinity that I love to tap into when I'm on stage. And it's fun to just be like ferocious for an hour and a half and then go back to hanging out with your friends. That's awesome. And one thing that really struck me when I was reading your bio um, is that I read you said that you treat your, your career, your album, everything like you use the word intentional. Like that was something that was really important to you. Can you just tell You've us? You've done your homework. <laughs> I loved that. I thought that was really interesting. Can you tell us a little bit, expand on that? What does that mean to you and why is that so important? How much time do you have? <laughs> Um, yeah, intentional, I thought, was a word that could just encompass everything because, especially in this day and age in the climate of country music, female artists really have to um, make sure that they're exposing what makes them unique, and that should be celebrated. I think that should apply to all artists, but that refers to my music, my image, my brand, my performance, what band I have behind me, what interviews am I giving? Like what stances am I taking for, you know, for women, which I think is something that is really prevalent on Cut to Impress. It's, there's female empowerment elements that I think are um, things I'm trying to highlight. So I'm, in, I'm approaching it like a brand because, like I said, just like when I go on stage and I'm someone else, it applies to my work. It's not a nine to five thing, but I have to be representing something constantly. That's very interesting. I like that. Um, and then before we let you go, I, I know 2014 is just getting started. So what should fans be looking for from you this year? What do you have going on? Touring, you know, morning music? I'm touring a bunch. We I know it's February, but 2014 is already really filling up, which is awesome because I love being on the road and meeting fans and uh, obviously performing with my band. But uh, we just shot a video for Looking Back Now. I just saw the first edit a couple of days ago, and I'm so excited to get it out there because it's uh, just a really raw, disarming, very personal video that I think accompanies the song perfectly.